something like the Hyperloop actually be the answer to super fast, environmentally friendly, high speed travel between our busiest cities? So the gauntlet has been thrown down. A design document for a whole new super cool way to travel. The only thing now, will someone pick it up and make the Hyperloop a reality? There are some companies that have that are forming to try to make the Hyperloop happen and uh, I encourage them. I think that's that's great. Um, I'm super focused on Tesla and SpaceX and to, to you know small amount on Solar City. So that that basically completely uses up my my brain. Tesla founder Elon Musk proposed this new technology called Hyperloop and it's being developed right now in Playa Vista here in this hangar behind me. The only resistance would be the air in front of the capsule which uh, we move to the back by using a compressor. The company Hyperloop has teamed up with the students to create this tube technology that's designed to connect cities up to 400 miles apart. Dirk Alborn says it's safer and more efficient than the railroad. Yeah. Welcome to our session about the augmented windows for the Hyperloop. Um, my name is Dirk Schard. I'm a hypermaster for AR and VR at Hyperloop Transportation Technologies and at the same time head of PR at Reflect. So in the opening keynote, they brought that little robot here. I have something which is much, much better because I have a real person. So welcome on stage, my colleague Wolfgang Stelzle. Hi. So, let's go. Uh, Wolfgang. So just to quickly introduce myself and uh, so that everyone knows why, um, why I'm coming with Dirk on the stage. Uh, my name is Wolfgang and I'm CEO of Reflect. Um, we are a company focused on augmented and virtual reality software solutions for enterprise. Um, and we do develop the augmented windows together with Hyperloop. So, um, I want to start the session with a question to, to you, Dirk. Um, what is the Hyperloop, actually? Well, first of all, who of you knows what's the Hyperloop? Wow. Again, so many. It's getting better. It's awesome. So, uh, in 2013, uh, Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk proposed a new transportation system, which he called the Hyperloop. It's a system, which you can see on the screen, uh, a vacuum tube and um, a capsule inside, you know, just traveling at the speed of sound. Um, very safe and, you know, I mean, in the last hundred years, we didn't have so much disruption, innovation in, in, in transportation. Hopefully there's nobody from transportation business, otherwise they kill me afterwards. Uh, but they're still using the same systems uh, and Elon Musk, proposed that to have really an innovation on that, to really use that, and the technology is available. So, also in 2013, uh, the, the CEO of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, Dirk Alborn, uh, received the, the, the approval from Elon Musk to build the Hyperloop. So, because that question always comes, uh, if that will be reality, yes, it will be reality. Um, the, the first ground is bought in, in the north of Los Angeles, which means uh, that uh, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies can start to build that in the next couple of months. And um, so that, that becomes reality. But can you, can you talk a little bit how, how it works? Yeah, Let, let's do that in a, in a quick video. Uh, imagine you have a train. You take that train and you build a tube around it. You put that train into your tube. Uh, you take a vacuum pump and you suck the air out completely. So you have a kind of a low pressure, like a vacuum. Uh, you reduce the size of it, you build a capsule, uh, put that on pylons, put solar panels on it for energy, and the Hyperloop system is ready. That was a simple explanation. Um, and, and of course, we must not forget to say there are many challenges, there are many questions, of course. But as said, the technology itself is available. So now that, now that we know a little bit how the Hyperloop works and how the train is actually running through such a tube, it is important to know that it doesn't have windows. Um, and the, the question is, how do we actually avoid that people are getting claustrophobia or something like that? So, so can you talk a little bit about how do, we, how do we look outside the capsule if it doesn't have windows and how do we avoid claustrophobia? Absolutely, um, and that, that's one of the challenges. And even if the capsule would have windows, it wouldn't make any sense because the, the tube itself is not transparent. 
so you cannot look outside. But um, most of you arrive by, by train or airplane or, or whatever. Um, and even in the metro and the subway, where it is dark and you cannot see so much, we are used to have windows. If you watch the people on an airplane during takeoff and landing, you see that they are looking outside the window. Uh, why? It's because they're searching for the ground as a reference. How high is the plane? How long does it take? And in those two phases, it gives the passenger a feeling what's happening. So this is why, why we were thinking about how can we solve that problem that you sit in that small capsule traveling with around 760 miles per hour, so around 1,200 kilometers, which is quite fast, um, without seeing anything of the real world outside. And, uh, and then it, we came up with the idea of the augmented windows, which let people look outside. And i show you in a video um, what's, what's the goal to do that, and then Wolfgang will explain a little bit about, about the technical side. here is getting really excited. <laughs> well, uh, maybe he's a future passenger. That's very yeah. cool. Did you see it? No, he doesn't want to talk to me. Okay, so the augmented windows show you how we let people look outside. Uh, and what looks quite simple, because you see just a screen and you can look outside, it's much more. There's a lot of technology and there are a lot of challenges which you have to solve. Wolfgang, um, you're developing it. So tell us a little bit more about what equipment do you need for it and what exactly are you doing there with the augmented windows? So yeah, as Dirk said, um, it's, it's, it's not as simple as just putting a screen beside the passenger. Um, that's one thing, of course. Uh, we need to make sure that we have a really high quality screen. Um, on the other hand, we, um, if, if we want to uh, give the user or the passenger the feeling that he or she can really look outside the window, uh, we must make, um, we must, we must track the user's head, um, so that we actually can simulate movement. So, for example, if you want to look a little bit to the left, so that you see more on the right side. If you look a bit, little bit to the right, that you see more on the left side, like you're, like you're looking out on a real window. So we do that with depth tracking cameras, like the Intel RealSense, for example. Um, the challenge is that it's not a simple face tracking because we do not actually only track from the front and we can like track the eyes and the mouth and the nose. Um, the challenge is that the user is kind of changing the perspective all the time and we need to make sure that we do, don't only track the face but the entire head and the entire mov uh, movement. Um, so it's, there's really about, uh, about tracking, there's a challenge then about user experience. So how do we make sure that if tracking fails, um, that the user experience is still good and that, that the user actually doesn't really recognize that something's not working, if that's the case. The more challenging um, fact uh, is, is actually also that even if we track the passenger, um, if we have more than one user or more than one passenger in a row, um, then we need to visualize different content from different perspectives. Um, there is not a technology out on the market which can actually do that already. There is stuff like rotating pixels and everything. Um, at the moment, it is a challenge, but we're working on it together with a couple of universities. 
um, in America as well, um, to get that solved. Um, we did already install a prototype, um, had a lot, a lot of experiences made um, in the offices in Los Angeles, um, and it's, so far it's looking quite good, and, and we think we, that we can really improve uh, the, the user experience, the passenger experience actually in, inside such a tube. Yeah, it's, it's like, like Wolfgang said, we installed the first prototype and that was quite interesting because it's the first time we had the chance to really test passengers. Uh, and it's not about what we expect, it's about what the passengers expect and how they react in front of the screens and everything. It was quite interesting. And we also um, do that because, because uh, today's travel suck, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody was in an airplane, they said, and, and on a train. But it's like, you know, it's not always like that. But uh, what Wolfgang explained is about the technology, um, how do we solve that, how we do the face tracking and everything. But then it's also about the passenger experience when you see it about the content. Uh, maybe it's about monetization of content. So the question is, what can you do that the passenger has really an experience with all that technique we have? And um, Wolfgang also can say a little bit about what kind of different experiences we can create and what makes sense. Well, what makes sense is actually not fully being answered already. Uh, there is a lot to figure out, of course, in the future. But just to give you an overview of what we can actually visualize, it starts from, um, from being inside the station, for, from visualizing what's actually outside with cameras, to a, a start of a journey uh, which goes over land, of course, a bit tricky, 1,200 kilometers per hour over land is, is feeling different than 10 kilometers up, up the air in a plane. Um, but we could, we could simulate different environments. You could be like in, in the galaxy, um, moving around the planets. Um, you could be like in, uh, in, a, in the Sahara, um, over the ocean, um, in Jurassic Park. We could create Universal um, Studios and Hollywood content to really be inside a movie and really, really creating new entertaining journeys for the passengers. Um, and of course, not only the, the actual content which attracts the passenger is important, but in the future we could imagine um, to create new forms of advertising um, to generate new business models inside um, the Hyperloop, um, which makes, for example, the passenger price or the price for a ticket cheaper and more affordable um, to, to run in. So there's a lot of things to figure out. There's new business models um, upcoming um, with the augmented windows and Again, we're, we're kind of at the, at the start of everything and we need to figure out where it goes to, but we have a lot, of a lot of possibilities. Absolutely. What we know so far is that we can say there are different phases. Uh, it's like when you, when you think about you know, acceleration up to 1,200 kilometers. Uh, so we have kind of three phases. It's acceleration, it's, it's traveling, so the journey itself, and it's deceleration. Um, and, and, and the first and the third phase, uh, we, we know, and it's what I explained with the airplane, that there people prefer to see really the reality outside while in the traveling and the cruising phase it's more that they want to have uh, entertainment content well that, those are the things we're, we're developing now and testing now the thing is we we actually we can also do that not only on on, on normal screens um, in a hyperloop because we don't have any screens at all but there's technologies out there already, transparent screens. Um, and, and I know about a project that you guys are doing with the, with the Deutsche Bahn already. Um, so maybe you can, you can let us know what, what's about that. Yeah. Is there anybody from Deutsche Bahn? No? Oh, well, cool. So yeah, um, HET, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, has a, uh, a cooperation with, with, the, with Deutsche Bahn, with a part of Deutsche Bahn, to uh, build the so-called innovation train. The idea is, to bring all the technologies and all the innovation uh, the company HAT has uh, with all the teams, with the global teams around the world, and to bring that on, on one train and to show what's possible meanwhile. Uh, and this is exactly what we do in our part now. What we're talking about is the augmented windows. There are several other technologies around. But what we do is a, it's, it's like the installation of the augmented windows in a, in a different version uh, on that innovation train. And uh, let's have a look on that, what kind of content we can show. And Wolfgang can explain a little bit what, about the content. 
I think a video starting, right? Yeah. So, here um, we go. so same here. Um, we can use location-based content, for example. So when you pass by a mountain, when you pass by a city, um, we, we can think about visualizing what the passenger actually sees. Um, we can give more information about the surrounding. Um, again, we can, uh, we can have different information, different advertising on the screen. Um, so, so a lot of possibilities. We would also need to figure out what's, what's possible here, but um, we, can, we can make travel more entertaining, definitely. That's part. The, the other one is more the virtual version, where you have a screen. And this one is a transparent, where you can especially use like location-based content, uh, so everything related to your, to your position, uh, like, like with GPS. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about innovation, I guess, because that project is everything is around innovation. Um, as, as Wolfgang already mentioned, there are many challenges. The thing is, um, some of you might know how, how Hyperloop transportation technology is actually working. Um, it's not like a, a huge funded um, a team, uh, 10 people, 20 people in one office. They, they do crowdsourcing all around the world, and it's probably very interesting for uh, the people here to, to get more info about that. So tell us a little bit about how Hyperloop transportation technology is, uh, is working, Dirk. So HET is not only building the Hyperloop uh, in, a, in a new way, let me say it like that, but it's also a new way of an organization um, in, in the terms of a startup. Um, because, of course, they're you know, the regular employees which are based in Los Angeles. Um, but there is a, a huge community around that. And this is what, what Wolfgang mentioned, it, that crowdsourcing um, approach. So there are many people like from SpaceX, NASA, Boeing, um, working for, for HGT on top of their regular job or you know, a freelancer or whatever, uh, and they receive stock options. So that means we have the possibility uh, by using innovation platforms to ask questions, to really discuss things, because everything is completely new. Everything is from scratch, and there, there's nothing is forbidden, and everything is allowed to think about. So if, if we say today, uh, you know, thinking out of the box, then I would say it's thinking without a box. Um, and that's the difference. So there are more than 500 people around, around the globe uh, working on that project. And the same approach we had um, reflect an, an, an HTT with the augmented windows. Because as Wolfgang said, there are things like the cameras are not available. Uh, maybe we need other screens, multi-use a few. There are so many things we need uh, to think about that we say, OK, we will do exactly the same. We will put that on an innovation platform. And, and this is what you see here. Uh, this is Jumpstart Fund, and Jumpstart Fund is the innovation platform of, uh, of the Hyperloop, also founded by, uh, by the CEO, Dirk Alborn, uh, 2013. And we have, the, we have the possibility to let people discuss, to be involved. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you see, there is only one follower, so don't worry about that. It's not that people are not interested, but it's not public yet. Um, we're working on it, but it's just a, a preview of what you see now uh, that you can see there are already questions on there, discussions going on in an internal team. And that's a unique approach to, to realize such a project, which is, uh, which is quite challenging. So what that also means, um, if you're interested or you say, hey, I have a solution or I worked on something like that, um, and, and you say, hey, that's quite a cool project, then, of course, um, you know, drop us a line, and uh, that's not a good sound. Uh, <laughs> what I wanted to say is that you can join the team. So um, just talk to us. That's quite interesting. And now let's see. Yeah. Awesome. A little bit too early, but maybe. Um, so. Let me give a quick a cup. No, no, that's okay. Uh, just, just go on. So, it's me with the video. Hey, it's me. Oh, that's you. Yeah. Here. Well, then let it run. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> Perfect. Now, what we've done is actually, um, who's been last week on on the Mexico? We we did set up an HTC Vive um, for creating a virtual experience, a virtual reality experience. Because in virtual reality, you can simulate quite good how the augmented windows work. 
And what you can see here is actually captured straight out of the virtual reality experience. Um, and you can see how the current interior design looks like. Of course, it's an ongoing process to develop it, so it's going to be changing over the next couple of days and years. Um, and what you can see here now is what I told before. If you move to the left, you see a little bit more from the right. If you move to the right, you see a little bit more from the left. And that's only exemplary content. Um, so you, as, as said before, you, you just move um, through the galaxy um, and see all the planets surrounding. Um, we do already have a lot, lot, of, different, lot of different content uh, types there uh, to experience what does the passenger like and what does the passenger not like. So that's very interesting. We uh, would have liked to bring it here, but it is a bit complex for, uh, for such a speech as we figured last week. So we thought we'd capture that video to show you how the augmented windows actually work. The, the interesting thing is, and this is why, why we did that, when you tell the people uh, we're doing the augmented windows to simulate a real window, and you can move around, then you can see in the faces, nobody understands what we're saying. Because nobody really intentionally looks out of a window and moves in front of it. You do that, and when you go, go back and you're on a train, then I'd recommend you do that. Because then you get a feeling for what we mean when you move in front of it, and it ch changes your perspective. Um, and then you will realize what we mean with the augmented windows. It's absolutely normal uh, that it's, it's kind of hard to understand. So that's it from our side. I um, hope you, you enjoyed it um, and you're interested, as said, if you want to join the team, then tell us. And if you have any questions, we're here. I think we do have a couple of minutes left, so we yeah. could use the time for a Q&A session. Yeah, correct? Yes. Thumbs up. Have a mic. Jörg Oserek, Skill Terror Institute. Um, I had the luck to get in touch with some real light field displays recently. Uh, what uh, kind of displays do you plan to use? Is it 3D or uh, light field or uh, lenticular or what? So at the moment we're using um, OLED displays, 55 inch, which is, uh, which is also a challenge because uh, you need to have uh, 4K content. And uh, then when we talk about live view and live recording, that, that's quite challenging. But it's a regular uh, OLED display. We could use it also in 3D, but uh, the 3D is not that important for us. Uh, it's more important to have in the future displays where we can simulate that multi-user view. When I talk about multi-user view, just to make that clear is that we have two different people looking at the screen, seeing their right perspective on the screen. Navigation systems, you already have that sometimes that the driver can see the navigation um, and, and the other person can see another content. So, uh, and the, fine, the, the, the interesting thing is, that I also can say here, it's a, it's a German company uh, who provides those screens, the traditional company Löwe. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, first of all, two short questions. The first, um, how do you decide if there are people, two people sitting in front of the screen currently, uh, who gets the right view, the one closer to it? It's a good question. Um, th this is also the way of thinking. One, one way is, of course, to say we need a technical solution that both of the passengers can have that perspective. This is what we need the screens for. It's in general possible, but the technology is, is not available yet. Uh, so, but the other side could also be to say, okay, uh, only the passenger at the window has the possibility and maybe pays more because there's the way to have that content. So there are two ways uh, which we are exploring at the moment. At the moment, it makes more sense to have the, the user uh, tracked, which is closer to the window because there the, the angle, the viewing angle and the change of perspective is more significant than when you sit further away. There you have less, less of a shift in the window, that's why at the moment, but as Dirk said, we're playing around uh, with the stuff. Okay. At the moment, we track the user on the window. Okay, thanks. And the second question, um, do you show um, the same environmental content for the whole capsule? Or can you, as a viewer in front of the window, decide what you want to see? One sees dinosaurs, the other outer space or so. And if you can choose what you want to see, did you make any tests? Does, does it, the experience break maybe with the other people in the same room? That's one of the challenges. 
Um, we, we just started to implement that prototype, so we had the first time to really test that. Um, there, it, it will be possible to have different content on different screens, yes. Um, the question is, how is, the, how is the perception of the passengers when they have, you know, uh, like everywhere there's a different kind of content. Um, but what we could imagine is that you have that like in a kind of a, of a business class capsule where you have only one, one seat or like, like on the airplane in the first class, you know, a little cabin where you have your screen and you can also turn, you can have Skype on it, you can have your emails on it. And then it would be possible to have different kind of content. So the, the, the answer to that question, and which is very interesting, is um, this is what we have to test. Thanks. You're welcome. More questions? I guess here's another one, if I see it right. We are running out of time. Hannah, you let me know, um, right? She one, 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 more. One, more. one more. One more question, yes. Uh, you mentioned the uh, innovation train. When will be uh, when will see the uh, train running? So the the plan is to have that ready next year. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> that was quick, because we are starting into the coffee break. Thank you very Can much, you, you guys. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you.